Hi everybody, uh, my name is Chris Mercer. I've been a Cub Scout leader for uh, several years here in Circle 10 Council uh, near Dallas, Texas. As a Cub Scout leader and one that's constantly busy with other things, I always find it to be very time consuming um, and sometimes hard to remember to go into Scout Book and log what we do every meeting right after the event. I wanted a place where I could make quick notes on who did what, when they did it, and I wanted that place to also give me a, something that I could quickly look at and search for, see if there's something we were doing that could be used for an adventure, or a quick place to see who'd completed, which adventure, and which ones still had to be done for Cubs. I'm an IT guy, so naturally I opened Microsoft Excel and went to work. A couple of years and a Wood Badge course later, I've decided to share this workbook with anyone else who may be interested in using it. Uh, you can download the workbook in the link in the description of this video. Uh, in this video, I'm going to kind of walk you through how to use this workbook. First, let's take a quick tour. So this is the first uh, sheet in the workbook. It's the main sheet where you can quickly glance at all of your scouts and, um, and see what their current status is. At the very top of the sheet, we have a link right here, this help link, where you can click um, and it'll email me if you need some help with the workbook. Uh, I don't, can't promise anything, I don't have any SLAs or anything, but if you need some help, feel free to reach out and if I can, I will be happy to do so. There's also a note with the version of the document, so if I update it in the future. And there's a link at the very bottom with a link to the latest version. Uh, there's also links to this video. So you can use this a couple different ways. You can use it as a cub master to track everyone in a small pack, or you can use it as a den leader to track just your den over the course of each year. That's primarily how I use it. Uh, so in my version of this, I have my scouts and their history uh, from lion through bobcat, tiger, wolf, etc. The scouts are listed on the left here and split up by den. And then the top row of each of these tables contains the uh, adventures, events, and, and milestones to complete for each year. These gray boxes are automatically calculated, so you don't have to do anything with these gray boxes, they will automatically populate. And then these white boxes to the right are used to uh, mark things that are really difficult to automatic, automatically calculate or things for special events. So we can mark in here who went to resident camp, who came to that camp out, who participated in Pinewood Derby, just so you know and you can see your participation all in one spot. Feel free to add or remove columns in these tables. Uh, you can just come in here, right click on one, insert a new table column, and you can add a new event. At the bottom, we have uh, instructions. So this is going to, I'm gonna walk through all of these in the video, uh, as well as some additional uh, ways to use the workbook. But if you need help, if you forget, there's instructions down here. The rest of these sheets uh, are links to the requirements, all of the requirements uh, for adventures for the individual ranks. Uh, we've got Lion and the Bobcat, and then the Tiger Wolf, Bear, Weeblows, AOL, and then a separate one for Weeblows and AOL electives because they share their electives. The only thing you should ever really have to change on these sheets are if requirements change, you can update these. Um, again, these gray boxes are calculated automatically. Um, and then up here, you can add additional scouts. So if I wanna add a scout to the lion, I can add a new one. We're gonna walk through that in just a minute. These might change. This is not an authoritative source. Uh, this is just me collecting them and putting them into Excel. If they change, you're welcome to come in here and modify them. You can add new adventures. Uh, you can just kind of mimic the format here. Uh, if they retire adventures, you can delete them, etc. 
the uh, item here on the left is just kind of a reference for the adventure, the requirement, and the number of the requirement. Uh, this question mark column contains the type of requirement. If it's a dash, it's a required adventure. I did that so I can sort those at the top. The E's are elective adventures and A's are awards that they can get. Um, and then most ranks also have uh, some P's, which are preview adventures, at least as of this writing. And then lastly, there's also a sheet for adults. So you can use this sheet to track awards uh, and what's required for those for your adults as well, because adult recognition is also important. Um, this is not a full list, but it's a list of many of the awards that I've found uh, that um, adults can earn by doing things specifically. I don't usually have most of the merit stuff on here uh, because that's usually uh, required. That's usually given out by with nominations, not something that you can technically work toward. Okay, so the first thing we're going to walk through is preparing uh, the workbook for use. So if you just download it, it's going to look like this. It's going to have a bunch of fake information in it. And you can get rid of that. Uh, what we want to do is delete the names of the scouts. And when we do that, you'll see some of the formulas kind of break here. That's on purpose because now it's not going to be able to find those scout names since we deleted those scouts. Also, you want to delete uh, the what's in these white boxes because obviously you're going to have your own events. You're going to have new scouts doing things, etc. I apologize if my uh, Excel workbook gets a little glitchy here. I'm try to fix that. So we've cleared out this information on the main page and we want to do the same thing for um, the den pages. So I'm going to jump over here. I'm just going to focus on doing some tigers. I'm going to delete all these dates. I'm going to delete the names of the scouts. I mean, delete the names of the scouts. Excel doesn't like those to be empty, so it'll put them with uh, column names. We'll fix that in a second. So here we've got an empty tiger sheet. We've got an empty main page. I'm going to fill these in with our scouts. So let's say we've got scouts. We'll call them Bob and Sarah. Uh, if these scouts are going to be tigers, they're also going to have to work on their bobcat. So we'll include them there as well. And then we're going to put them in the rank pages. So we're going to put Bob and Sarah into bobcats and Bob and Sarah as tigers. So now once those names matched, you can see they, these formulas have reset and they are ready to be used. Be sure not to delete anything out of these gray boxes because they contain formulas and those formulas are fairly complex. Uh, if you do delete them, so if I delete this one right here, for example, I can always just undo it or these formulas are designed in a way so that they're very portable, very easy to move around. So I've deleted this one. I've still got the formula here. I can just drag this up and it's gonna work just as well. Alrighty, let me make sure I'm not forgetting anything here. Okay, so let's look at how to actually utilize this for advancement. So it's super easy. The idea is whenever you have a meeting, you go to your meeting, you come back and you may want to go into, traditionally you go into scout book and update all the stuff. Well, because at least as of today, uh, boy den and girl dens are separate because scout book's a little bit slow. There's lots of clicks involved to get everything updated. What I like to do is update it in this Excel document. And then every once in a while, uh, maybe once a week or once a month, I'll go in and put all this stuff in Scout Book. That way I can do it kind of in bulk. So let's say we did um, a Bobcat meeting, a Bobcat Blitz, and Bob and Sarah got all their Bobcat requirements. 
So we come over here to the Bobcat page. There are, these are all the requirements for Bobcat. And all we would do is put in the date that they earned them. So let's say um, today, for example, is March 9th. Let's put in 39. And if they earned all these requirements today, I can copy all those down. These are all the Bobcat requirements themselves. I'm gonna color these black. I'll show you why in just a moment. Oops. Let's say Sarah did the exact same thing. Let's say Sarah, for some reason, uh, wasn't able to figure out the Cub Scout motto. I don't know why, but let's say she wasn't able to. So we're gonna say she didn't complete that. You'll notice on the right here, we've got a count of the number of scouts that we've got that did the requirement, the number that didn't. If these aren't working for some reason, uh, you may have to turn on a feature of Excel called iterative calculations. That is mentioned in the instructions here. Um, you'd have to Google that because how to do it is different based on your operating system and the version of Excel you have. So I can't show you here. Um, we've also heard from Sarah's parents that they did the youth protection together. And so most of the requirements, most of the adventures look like this, where they've got the requirements listed um, that are not in bold. So there's only one requirement for this adventure. Because she did that, she's now completed all the requirements. And because she's completed the requirements, she's earned the adventure. So now that we've got dates in there, I'm at, uh, I like to use black for just initial date entry. So we put them in black because that's all we've done. We put them here in Excel. If we go look at our main page, you'll see that it's automatically populated that Bob is almost done. The only thing Bob needs is the youth protection pamphlet and Sarah just needs the motto. So let's say they went ahead and finished those. Update those, update them here. And now we've got two Bobcats completely done. You'll notice this Bobcat requirement is listed as one of the requirements for all the other ranks. And you'll also notice that this is automatically populated. Bob and Sarah have completed Bobcat. Now I have these in black because I've just put the dates in here. When I go to put these in Scout Book, once I put them in Scout Book, I will change them to green. That tells me that I've got the dates in here and these have been updated in Scout Book. When they get the awards, when they actually get awarded the item, I like to come back here and change it to orange. Just another color just to show that they've been awarded the item. Not requirement, just something that I like to do with it. So let's say we have another meeting. We're gonna do a tiger meeting. Let's say we're gonna do my tiger jungle. And so we're gonna put, uh, Let's say it's, we have to do requirement one and two others. So we're gonna do requirement one. Let's say we did that later today. Change all these to black. And let's say we didn't do number two, but we did number three and number four. And we didn't do number five. So we've done one and two others. We've met the requirements. So we go and mark that and mark that they've completed the adventure. We're gonna say Sarah did the exact same thing, except Sarah didn't point out the kinds of birds, but let's say she did go on the one foot hike. So they both completed this adventure. Since we put a date in this adventure field, um, I also call this requirement number zero on all the adventures. That way you can quickly filter on that if you wanted to see the, all the adventures and who's done them. If we go back to our main list here, we see that they both completed this adventure. This My, My Tiger Jungle. And then later on, maybe next, maybe this weekend or next week, I'm gonna come in here and add them to Scout Book and I can continue to track other adventures and other awards. If they only complete part of uh, an adventure, so let's say Sarah only joined us for the last half and she didn't uh, go for a walk outside, but she did take a one foot hike, we can mark those 
a requirements completed. She hasn't completed the adventure yet. But later on, let's say tomorrow, she comes and completes it. Then we can mark that adventure as complete. Once they've completed all the adventures, I'm just gonna go through here real quick and put a date in all the required adventures. Uh, that can be really easy to do. This is one of the reasons I made this. You can filter on stuff and do things really quickly. Let's say I know Bob has completed all the Tiger Adventures uh, over the last week. I can come in here and filter on only the adventures themselves, not the requirements of them. I can filter this question mark on only required adventures, the dash. And I can come in here and say, you know what, you've completed all those. All the additional requirements, you don't have to fill these in. Uh, I know some packs don't, they just mark the actual requirement itself. And so here he's got dates and all the important stuff. We go back to our main page and we can see that he's completed everything for um, Tiger, except for the Protect Yourself Adventure. I forgot that one because it's preview. It didn't show up as the required one. Um, they used to be, that used to be optional. Uh, they just this year, they changed that and that's why I haven't updated it here in the book yet as a required thing. So here's the protect yourself rules. Put a date in there. Now we can see that he's completed all of these. Um, he also needs to complete an elective. Because of huge Excel formulas, I don't have this part automated. So we'll say that yes, sometime in the last year he has completed an elective adventure and now he's completed his Tiger Inc. So now we can track all this in here. We can also track all this in Scoutbook, of course, but it involves going in and doing a lot of work, whereas here in the spreadsheet, we just put in the dates, plug in the dates, and that's it. Um, so that's how it works for using it as advancement. Uh, just a quick note on kind of way this is set up. Uh, we talked about the item number being um, just, it's generated uniquely for each entry. We talked about the type of adventure. Um, this ADV column, this is just a way to uniquely identify each adventure. Um, normally I use the initials, for example, this Tiger Bites, I call it TB. Nothing else says TB. And then you have the numbers, which are the requirements themselves and the requirement numbers. Uh, I use um, the tenths position here. So for example, requirement five for Games Tigers Play, so you have to do one of these things. So it's 5.1 and 5.2. They can do either one of these things. When they do it, you can mark them as complete for that. Uh, some things have a lot of options. For example, our um, Outdoor Activity Award has a lot of options. So those, I have 3.01 through 3.14 instead of 3.1, 3.2, because I do an out of tens. But it works the same way. So that's how you can you can quickly find, uh, you can quickly filter this in there however you want. If we only want to see required adventures, we can mark that dash. If we only want to see awards, we can filter that. If we only want to see the names of awards, we can filter on that item zero or the names of elective adventures. If we want to see everything about floats and boats and, and just that, we can clear those. Floats and Boats is known as FB, so we can filter on FB. Here's everything about Floats and Boats and nothing else. So it makes it super easy to do that. There's a couple other uh, tips and tricks that you can do with it. Oh, that's the, the basic use case for it, is to just track those dates, and then you can track all your people. When Bob and Sarah rank up to Wolf next year, if you're a DIN leader, you can move these into Wolf, we can go into the wolf sheet, put their names on top, and we can do that. Or if you're a cub master, maybe you have a small pack, you can track all of your scouts each year with a new copy of this sheet and all the dents. It's up to you. There are some other things you can do. We talked about the filtering and finding things. Um, you can, uh, one of the things I like to do is with these uh, columns of who's done and who's left to do, I can come in here and filter on just the adventures themselves, and then I can sort for who's done, you know, 
who's done the adventures and who needs to do the adventures and which adventures we haven't done at all yet. Anytime you need to um, sort the whole list, if it for some reason gets out of order, say for example, we sort it by requirement name and it's all messed up, all you have to do is come over here and sort by item and it fixes it. And that's, that's why I've designed it like that. It automatically sorts everything by the type of adventure, the name of the adventure, and the requirement number. So, let me remember the other things I wanted to talk about here. Uh, the other thing is uh, it gives you the ability to find requirements. So let's say, hypothetically, I'm going to a camping event and I'm going to have some bears uh, out camping with me, with us, as a pack. Um, I can come in here and look at the requirements for bears and search for the word camp. So the word camp appears in these requirements for bears. Um, there's one in Bear Necessities. It talks about going camping. In the Outdoor Activity Award, it talks about a campfire or going camping. And in Roaring Laughter, it talks about practicing at a campfire. So I know if I'm going camping, I could potentially try to work all of these requirements into my camp and check a lot of boxes for my scouts. Or if I'm going to, um, so let's say I'm, I, while I'm out camping, then uh, I wanna do, I wanna play some games with my tigers. So I can clear this out. I can go to my tiger page. I can search requirement for game. And there's lots of things I can do with tigers. Looks like there's two whole adventures, three whole adventures based on it. So I could plan a whole bunch of games and knock out a bunch of requirements. And I can see that Bob has already done games tigers play. So if he's the only tiger coming, I don't have to worry about that one. So these are questions you can answer with this sheet. Uh, that is super hard to do in Scout Book, but very easy to do in this Excel uh, document. And then uh, under the main page with these additional things, I can keep track of, you know, who goes to resident camp for each year, what special events they might go to, who's participated in Pinewood Derby or scouting for food. Uh, and I can keep track of all those, which traditionally is really hard to do unless you have a developed pack that has these um, tracks somewhere very specific. Uh, lastly, in the adult page, uh, it, the adult's pretty self-explanatory. It works exactly the same way, except there's no actual requirements. This is just for tracking. One of the things I have automated on this page, though, uh, so I've got a bunch of positions up here just as kind of a starter. You can add or remove them as you need them. Um, and you can come in here and put the name in there. So, for example, um, I'm the assistant come master of my pack. I can come and put in Chris. Um, I've been scouting since... Uh, October of 2019, I think. Uh, and so what I can do uh, for this adult, um, I've automated the anniversary start. So if I put in my date in here, if I started the 1st of October, 2019, this will automatically calculate um, that I've got three service stars that I can use, or the, the service star with the number three in it. Um, and if I had more than five years, so that's changes 2013, for example, then I'm eligible for one veteran star as, uh, as well. Uh, so those are automatic. All the rest are just manual. Um, you can come in here and fill in these as, uh, as needed. Uh, let's see if I miss anything. I think that's pretty much it. Um, hopefully this is useful uh, for you all. Please feel free to reach out with the help link for any comments, uh, feedback, critiques, suggestions, uh, help if you need it, anything you need, feel free to reach out um, and, uh, and enjoy, uh, enjoy scouting. Thanks.